Gianna snaps a few more photos on her phone, then I hand her my phone too and return to my spot between the rivals. They sling their arms around me again. And again, I don't mind one bit. Riker's arm is so big. Chase's too. Strong arms are just extra nice. Perfect, Gianna declares when she's done, then holds up a finger. But let me just check and make sure they'll work. As Gianna busies herself swiping the screen, the guy with the killer smile turns to me. So, who's your favorite player, Trina? I'm guessing, since you're wearing a Weston jersey, that it's me. Chase says, all charm and great teeth. He's friendlier than I'd expected him to be. I figured a couple of pampered athletes would just smile plastically for the camera, since they're doing this out of obligation, then focus their attention on the game, no conversation allowed. I return his smile with one of my own. Is that a requirement? That I have a favorite? I ask playfully. Nope, but it's likely you will when you see me play. Someone is confident. But Riker scoffs. I turn to him curious. Does that mean you think you'll be my favorite instead? He scratches his jaw, a little aloof. I don't play to make favorites. I play to win. He says with a careless shrug, but he's not aloof with his stare, aimed right at me. His dark blue eyes are smoldering with their intensity, with a promise of what's to come. In the game? On the ice? Or after, when we all play ping pong? I'm not sure, but it seems like it'd be fun to wind him up. But you get my point. I say, exasperated, turning to our VIP guest. I just don't trust anyone around my little sisters. Ergo, the seatbelt law. I don't think the seatbelt was the protection they needed at prom. Trina stage whispers. Cracking up, Chase offers her a hand to high five. Clenching my jaw, I yank my seatbelt as hard as I can and put it on. Put yours on too, I bark at my friend. With his charming smile that wins over fans, women, and reporters, Chase pats Trina's shoulder. Don't worry about him. He has the manners of a Rottweiler. But I can translate Riker's speak. What he means to say is, I'm secretly a softie and I don't want a thing to happen to you, especially while you're out with us. So would you please put your seatbelt on? With an amused shake of her head, Trina complies. Only because Captain Bossy asked nicely. She says to Chase flashing him a cute grin. I look away. We have nicknames already. Nice. Also, accurate. Chase rubs his palms together, then points to me. What's his? Please tell me it's Big Bad Wolf. She lifts her chin a little defiantly as she stares me down, just like I did to her a few minutes ago. It's Mr. Grumpy, but I think Big Bad Wolf works too. Her boldness is f hot too. This is a problem. Yes, yes it does, I say, staying stone-faced. I tip my chin at Chase. You too, golden boy. Put it on. With a sigh, Chase takes off his suit jacket and tugs on the seat belt. Sure thing, big bad wolf. Are you afraid she doesn't want to sleep together again? Boom. There it is. He said it. The T word. Together. I drop my head against the cold window, then admit the stark truth. Yes, I can't stop thinking about the way she melted under our touch, I say, but I have to face this head on, so I turn around and draw a soldiering breath. This is new terrain, talking about sex this openly, even with my buddy. Yes, last night we talked about a game plan for a hot night, but we were powered by the adrenaline and swagger of what seemed like a one-time opportunity. Now, I want another night with her. Maybe even a whole week. But I also want Riker to have her too. The way she fell apart when we pleasured her together was addictive. I want to share her again, if she wants to. Do you? Riker just smiles, like... Took you long enough. I sure do. We leave together, men on a mission. <laughs>